Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth interactive study of the Word of God. I'm glad you joined us today as we conclude a, a fascinating series of studies on missionaries in the Bible. It has been such a journey. And if you've missed any, you can go back and watch them on our website. But today, our topic, Must the Whole World Hear? That's a question we need to answer. We're glad you're with us for Hope Sabbath School today. I want to welcome our team, too. It's good to be together, isn't it? Yes, it is. And, you know, this has been an amazing series of studies. Mm -hmm. uh, some stories that we knew before, but just gaining powerful lessons sure. as we study them again. And we're glad that you've been part of our journey. And like I said, if you've missed any, you can go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. You can watch the whole series on missionaries. It's been an amazing journey together. I know you'll be blessed. Thanks also for writing to us. You can write to sshope at hopetv.org. And we love to hear from you. We share it with the entire team. Here's a note from Cheryl in New Zealand. She says, I just want to thank you for Hope Sabbath School. I'm encouraged hearing different points of view on the lesson and getting the scriptures that I can refer to as I sometimes teach a Hope Sabbath School in my own church. Amen. Well, you can download the outline from our website if you want to use it. I'm involved in a church plant. That's like a little group yeah. starting mm -hmm. uh, in a beautiful part of New Zealand. It's been such a blessing for me to be involved in it. We have a couple of outreach programs in place for the next year, and we're excited about sharing Jesus with other people. Amen. Wow, Amen. she's on fire. I'm looking forward to meeting you all one day. Thanks again, Cheryl. Well, Cheryl, you are a missionary already, <laughs> and we're glad that Hope Sabbath School is helping you to hide the word in your heart yeah. so that you can share that with others. Just a short note from... Deborah in Jamaica. Any Jamaican representatives here? Adrian, all right. A wave and a smile for Deborah in Jamaica. She says, I'm writing from Jamaica. I enjoy Hope Sabbath School. Continue to bless people around the world. Well, we know that's only possible by the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Yes. But it is amazing when we hear people are blessed. Mm -hmm. Kathy writes from the United States of America and says, uh, Dear friends, Hope Sabbath School is such a blessing to me. I am an absolute newborn in the faith, hmm. learning and growing. I learned about the Seventh-day Adventist faith by watching Hope Sabbath School wow, amen. and amen. Hope Praise TV, God. which has other programming. I watch Hope TV every day. Hmm. I have such a hunger and a desire to learn more. Hmm. Is that beautiful? Amen. You know what Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. They shall be filled. Thank you so much for, for providing great Bible teaching and examples of how to live a life for God. Yes. You say, God, help us, right? Yes. People are watching us when we smile, when we give our testimony, even a testimony about making a mistake yes. and uh, being willing to ask for forgiveness. And uh, Kathy writes and says, I ask for your prayers as I start this new journey, rededicating my life to God. Amen? Amen. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Thank you for writing to us, Kathy, from the United States of America. One last note from someone in Nigeria, and this is an unusual name. Her name, and I'm so thankful because at the end she says, your sister, her name is Good Luck. Good luck. Wow. Good luck, Akudo. And thanks for writing to us, Good Luck. Um, you are the very first person I've met with that name. <laughs> and I'm so glad that it's someone who loves Jesus. She says, Hope Sabbath School has been a real blessing to me and I'm sure to Christians around the world. Yeah. I now teach the lessons each Sabbath with ease and vigor. Mm. You are wonderful tools in God's hands. <laughs> so she's gone from being a learner mm -hmm. to being a missionary. Yes, yes. Isn't that awesome? It is. Not only is she sharing the word, but she says, I now sing the scripture songs with my children <laughs> because it's good to hide God's word in our hearts. Yes, wow. Your zeal in doing God's work is so encouraging. Please pray for me to humble myself 
with heaven's wisdom mm. so I can intensify my effort to tell others about our Lord and his soon return. Amen. Amen. <laughs> well, you've inspired us. Good luck. Thank you for writing to us. Mm. Your sister, she says, in the diaspora. That's the scattering yeah. around the world. Mm. And just take a look at our Hope Sabbath School team today. We mm. represent every nation yes. around the world, and we've got a good message to share about Jesus, don't we? Yes, yes. we do. Right now, right now we're going to sing a song, though, <laughs> a song from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. It's our theme song for this series, You Are a Chosen Generation. Let's sing it together. keep that marvelous light note going on uh, because we really do have an amazing gospel to share, don't we? Yes. Every nation, wherever you are on planet Earth, God loves you. And He wants not only to save you, but use you to bring saving good news to those around you. Let's pray. We can understand what the Bible teaches. Must the whole world hear? Yes. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you would guide our Hope Sabbath School study. This has been a life-changing series about mm. missionaries in the Bible, but it's also our story. And I pray that as we conclude this series of studies, that you would bring conviction to our hearts, yes. the privilege, the blessing of sharing the good news about your love with those around us. Guide us in our study today, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We're going to start in the book of Acts. The book of Acts is actually a book of the work of the Holy Spirit in the mm -hmm. early church. And uh, we find many inspiring passages there. We're going to start in Acts chapter 4 and verse 12. And I'm going to ask Heather if you'd start our study today. This is Peter who once was so intimidated that he mm -hmm. said, well, I don't know who Jesus is. But now mm -hmm. filled with the Holy Spirit, it says in earlier in the chapter. What does he say in Acts 4 and verse 12? I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men 
by which we must be saved. Yes. Amen? Amen. Now, if it's true that Jesus is the way of salvation, then we may have already started to ask the, answer the question, must the whole world hear? Mm -hmm. yes. But let's look at a few other verses. In John 14 and verse 6, we read the words of Jesus. Adrian, you have that for us? Yes, I do. John 14 and verse 6, a powerful claim of Jesus. Uh, what does he say? All right, we're from the New International Version. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him. You do know him and have seen him. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I think it was C.S. Lewis who said Jesus was either a madman, you know, thinking <laughs> that he's like, you know, out of touch with reality, uh, a deceiver who knows he's not really who he's claiming to be, mm. trying to lead people astray, or he is actually who he says he is, and he is the only way. Yeah. Uh, now we'll discover that people can be saved who haven't heard the good news about him yet, mm -hmm. but they're saved because of Jesus. Yeah. So let's look at a few verses that talk about the need for the whole world to hear. Mark 16, these are words of Jesus. Mark 16, verses 15 and 16. And Carrie Ann, if you have that, you read for us Mark 16. What does Jesus say, verses 15 and 16? I'm reading from the New King James Version. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Yeah. Now, I, I like that. Uh, go into all the world. And just in case you uh, thought that wasn't inclusive, uh, and, and you need to preach it to how many? What did it say? To every creature. Yeah. Every creature. Yeah. Isn't there another verse in Matthew where it says, to every nation, kindred, tongue, 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 and people. So just because you spoke to one person in a country, there may be 20 other tribes there that need yeah, to hear, yeah, right? Yeah. 20 other groups yeah. that need to hear. Yeah. So it's got to go to everyone. How is that possible mm. with the, what, seven plus billion uh, <laughs> on the planet? And mm. the answer Jesus gives in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8 if I have learned one lesson in this series on miracles, uh, on missionaries, yeah. is it's going to take miracles. Yeah. Yes. And what does it say, David, in Acts 1 and verse 8? Well, the New International Version says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. You will be. That's a prophecy, isn't it? Yeah. 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 So... Not only must the whole world hear, but the whole world going is going to hear. Yeah. 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 And I guess we just decide whether we're part of it or yeah. not, right? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that why we're here at Hope Sabbath School? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So that the whole world can hear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole world is going to hear. Now, I have a question for you. There's a text, Jonathan, maybe you can read it in Romans chapter 2, that seems to suggest that people can be saved without knowing about Jesus, hmm. that, um, that God sees their hearts, and if they're sincerely trusting in Him. What, what is Paul talking about there, and, and how does that relate to the whole world needing to hear about Jesus? Hmm. All right, I'll be reading from the New International Version, verse 14 through 16. Indeed, when Gentiles who do not, do not have the law do by nature things required by the law, they are a law for themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the requirements of the law are written in their hearts, their consciences, also bearing witness, and their thoughts, sometimes accusing them, and at other times even defending them. This will take place on the day when God judges people's secrets through Jesus Christ, as my gospel declares. So Jesus is still the judge, and he is the active agent in the plan of salvation, but apparently some people, they didn't know very much, right? Mm. Uh, aren't you thankful for that promise in the Bible where it says people look on the outside, yes. God but God outside. does what? <laughs> so God sees our hearts. So let's imagine there is someone in some uh, remote part of the world like Chicago, or uh, uh, you thought I was going to say somewhere in, in Asia, right? Uh, somewhere, and they've just not heard. They sincerely are trusting God. They're, there's got to be a God. We're not here by accident, even though people keep telling us we are. Mm. There's so much evidence. Mm. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. They say, God, I'm going to trust you. 
that person can be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So why do we then go and tell them about Jesus? <laughs> I mean, doesn't that, does that confuse them? Why do we go tell them? Mm. What do you think, Wilbur? I think telling them about Jesus makes it more practical to them because Jesus said he's the way. And basically following what he did on earth makes it more practical to them. So, they so you're saying uh, it kind of uh, gives them um, what? More... Assurance. They've got assurance already if they're trusting in God. Does it, does it give them more practical counsel yeah, about how God wants them to live? Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, hold it. And I think God doesn't want his children to feel alone, so I think he wants us to connect and that they will have the support of other people around in the faith. So then I connect with other people who are followers of Jesus mm -hmm. and, and we're growing. Sean? He said that he came to make your life more abundant. Yes. So telling others about him enriches their lives like we, like we just heard. So I have come that you might have life, Jesus said, mm -hmm. and have it more abundant. Mm -hmm. You know, some people think Christianity is all about living forever. <laughs> it really isn't. Mm -hmm. Christianity is all about abundant life. Right. Mm -hmm. And that starts now, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've come you might have life. Jonathan? I just another verse I really like is, uh, first, is John 3, 19, I think it is. It's right. It says, um, this is the verdict. Uh, or the judgment, light has come into the world, and men have loved darkness rather than light. So just like uh, Mark said, whoever does not believe will be condemned. It's when we see Christ, and we see who he is, and his love, his character, his self-sacrifice, that in itself judges us. When we, we, we turn to that, and we want more, mm. and we like throw ourselves in him, or we turn away. Mm. Uh, that, that passage you quoted in John three nineteen. fortunately, right before it is, God so... Love, love the world, world, right? So, you know, it's, ooh, that's a strong text that people love darkness rather than light. Right before it, it says, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Amen. Right. Mm -hmm. But that the world through him might be, might be saved. So, they're saved by trusting God, but they're going to learn so much more about the abundant life and, yeah. and how God wants them to live if we tell them not only about Jesus, but all the things he taught. Mm. Carrie Ann? Also, um, to someone who... It's just believing it now. They may see God as a bigger life force, not quite as close. But the Bible says that Jesus went through everything that we could go through. So they know there's someone who was here that can relate to them more personally. Yes. So we do not have, Hebrews says, a high priest who is unable yeah. to sympathize with us, right? Yeah. But in all points, tempted like as we are. Jeff. Yeah, we, we read earlier, Jesus said that he's the way, the truth, and the life. And mm -hmm. just if someone doesn't know, knowing Jesus is like knowing the road map. Mm -hmm. And he's the medium through which we are saved. So knowing him makes us less likely to be lost. Mm. Absolutely, it does. And, and I think it, if he's the way, it not only puts me on the way of salvation, but it shows me how to walk. Right. Yeah. Right. shows me how to live. David? You know, Jesus came to earth to save us. And he hung on the cross. But he actually walked the road. He got up every morning. Yeah. And so if I know that he's also an example, then I want to know about the example, which is Jesus He did Christ. say, follow me, didn't he? <laughs> right. Yeah, he did. Heather. Um, throughout his life, um, as he walked, he had a purpose, and he stuck to that purpose. And throughout life, as we go along, and when people bring up the possibility, oh, you just came about to be by chance, it kind of weakens that sense of purpose. But by looking at Jesus and seeing how he stuck to his one purpose, we can have um, a buildup of our faith in him. Amen. It inspires us, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, I want to ask a question. We're going to go to the book of Acts, chapter 8. How much do people need to hear? Mm -hmm. To say, okay, why are we doing a whole series on missionaries and maybe we'll do a whole series on Proverbs and we'll do a whole series on the gospel? Why don't we just do one program <laughs> just telling them the truth about Jesus and just rebroadcast it over and over again? Well, some people read this story in Acts chapter 8. Daisy, perhaps you could pick up the story for us in verse 35 through 38. And they say, well, they just need to know that Jesus is the Christ. They don't need to tell them anything else. Hmm. Let's see uh, what the story is about. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. So, beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. As they rode along, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there's some water. 
Why can't I be baptized? He ordered the carriage to stop, and they went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. Now, uh, how much did the Ethiopian official know about God, the truth of God? Was it just what Philip told him? No. How do you know that, Jonathan? Well, he seemed to, I mean, he was reading the scriptures, and he at least knew who the prophet was. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure exactly, but I, well, I know... Well, hadn't he also gone to worship? Hadn't he also come <laughs> exactly. to, to worship? Yes, uh, and he was reading the scriptures. What didn't he know? Jesus. What didn't he know? Jesus. Well, he, di he didn't know the Messiah had come, did he? No. And he didn't know who the prophet was talking about there right. in chapter 53. But he had a lot of... What else did Philip tell him? It's not recorded in the text, besides the fact that Jesus is the one who is spoken about in the text. What else did he tell him? Do we know for sure? You should be baptized. That's right. <laughs> because Philip doesn't say, oh, stop, you need to be baptized. No. The Ethiopian says, hey, there's water, right? So apparently, we don't know how long the Bible study was, but it's a long way on the road down to Gaza through the desert. You know, they probably had a pretty decent Bible study. Mm -hmm. But you still say, wow, can a person, is that it? Is that all you need to teach them? Mm -hmm. Just that Jesus is the Christ and that you should be baptized. Right. Well, let's let Jesus answer that question, shall we? Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Matthew chapter 28. Sean, do you have that? Read verses 19 and 20 for us. I'm reading from the King James Version. And it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father mm -hmm. and of the Son mm -hmm. and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. So go and teach them what? All things. All things, all things. All things I've commanded you. Yeah. So you've read the Gospels, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what were some of the things Jesus talked about in his teaching? What the Love. kingdom of heaven is like. What the kingdom of heaven is like right now or in the future? Now. Both. Both. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Both now. And in the future, mm -hmm. what else did he talk about in his teachings? Love. Forgiveness. Well, about forgiveness. Forgiveness, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you've been forgiven, you ought to forgive. Mm -hmm. In fact, the one who's been forgiven much must forgive. Much, will love much yeah. and must forgive. You're mm -hmm. right. What else did Jesus teach about? True leadership. True leadership. What did that look mm -hmm. like, Jonathan? Uh, the opposite of what we think it looks like in this world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not, not controlling and power. It's about service. You think, he said, that they kind of lord it over each other, but it shall not be that way with you. If you want to be a great leader yep. in my kingdom, what do you need to be like? A servant. A servant. A servant of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty radical teaching, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what other teachings did Jesus give? About loving God with our whole heart and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Mm -hmm. Kind of summarized the whole <laughs> scripture in that, didn't he? Mm -hmm. The two great commandments, right? Love God with all your heart. Yep. Love your neighbor as yourself. So whatever conclusions we come to, people say, well, really, it all, it all based on Jesus. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love God with all your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. We say, that's right. You've got it, yes. right? Yes. yes. <laughs> And then everything else becomes a detailed description. Now, take, take the book of Romans, for example. That's a pretty heavy mm -hmm. theological book, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got texts like, the wages of sin is... Death. Death. Yeah. That's the bad news. What's the good news? <laughs> gift the gift of God, God is... Eternal. And how do we get it? By working our way to heaven? No. no. Believe. Believe what does it say? The gift of God is eternal life through, through, through Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ our Lord. I mean, it's pretty heavy theological book, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's no condemnation to those who are in Christ yeah. Jesus. Jesus. I mean, yes. but do you know how many chapters of the, of the letter to the Romans? Of course, the original letter didn't have chapters, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> chapters were added in about the 12th century. Mm -hmm. So they kind of put them in to help us find a way around. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll use that as an example. We'll say we have chapters. And there are how many chapters in Romans? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Ah, put you on the spot, didn't I? <laughs> There are 16 chapters in the book of Romans. All right, this is a little Bible quiz for us. <laughs> do you know how many are, deal with practical, everyday, how to live as a follower of Jesus? 
All of it. Yeah. No, it's well, no. <laughs> Thank you, Daisy. <laughs> Daisy said all of it. Well, I suppose you could say that, but really getting down to the specifics of day-to-day -day living, it starts in chapter 12, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Five whole chapters uh, devoted to how to live. Now, let me ask you a question. We're talking about missionaries here, right? I know you've got a great answer to this question, <laughs> all right? If salvation's by faith, they just need to hear that Jesus is their Savior and accept Him, why is the way that we live so important? Because we're not saved by our behavior, right? Gary, why is the way that we're living so important, even as missionaries? Well, as a missionary, our, the, the goal, the object of our mission is to let other people know who the Savior is. So we do that by not just talking to them and, you know, conversing, but by how we live our lives, what we eat, how we drink, maybe doing things to the glory of God. I mean, Paul said, do all to the glory of right. God. So right. all includes how we live our lives. How about how we treat them? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? We talk about loving yes. our neighbor as ourself. Hold it. Because we have a God who loves us, He also wants us to be happy. And so that's why He tells us things, how, how to live practically so that we can be most happy since he loves us. So, so quite apart from being a missionary and a witness to others, you're saying five chapters, for example, in Romans, because he wants us to have that abundant life that Sean talked about earlier, right? right. Mm -hmm. But there are implications uh, in terms of how we connect with other people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, what did Jesus do in his ministry? How did he connect with people? What was his method of connecting with people? Mm -hmm. Daisy? He met them at their point of need. He mm -hmm. saw what they were going through and he started there. And once he met that need, then he told them about, you know, the way to have eternal life. Mm -hmm. So very practical Christian living, mm -hmm. right? So the scriptures has plenty of that mm -hmm. and we want to recognize that that's part of the Christian life. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go back and take a look at why people need to hear. Someone like, you know what? That's your philosophy of life. It's all right. Let's make you happy. That's good. <laughs> okay? It's good. But why do I need to hear? Mm. Well, let's, let's share with them uh, what the Bible says. Uh, a few verses. We kind of quoted them. Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, and Romans 7.14 and 15 tells us that we've got something really important to share. Jeff, could you read for us Romans 3, verse 23? I'll be reading the New King James Version. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm. Have you ever met someone that says, uh, I'm a pretty good person? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm, not a, I'm not a sinner. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with that person? Is that person a sinner? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. We all are. We all are, right? Yeah. just said we're all, all have sinned, right? Mm -hmm. So what, what are you going to do with this person? Say, you know what? I'm better than a lot of those religious hypocrites mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who go to church once a year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or even some that go once a week right. <laughs> or some who go once a day. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a better person. Mm -hmm. uh, don't talk to me about needing salvation. Mm -hmm. What do you do with someone like that? Mm -hmm. Does God love that person? Uh, yes. yeah. So what are you going to do, Sean? Um, Sometimes you have to set the standard a little bit higher than yourself. All the time you have to set the standard higher than yourself, and that's Jesus Christ. Okay. So living that life, you can show them that it's more than just comparing one an to one another, but okay. actually going above and beyond. So the danger is that that person is comparing herself or himself with, the, with someone else rather than looking Sinner. to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe... That's just what they do. So what are you going to do? How are you going to reach that person if everybody needs to hear that we need a Savior? But they're like, you know, I'm not a bad person. I'm, I'm okay. I'm not a sinner. Yes. What do you think, Wilbur? I think, well, the, the Scripture is pretty much clear. It says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so that should tell you that regardless of how you feel about your current state and your Christian walk, you're still, it, you're still a sinner. And uh, even though you're... you're 
your spirituality is still what it f considered filthy rags before God. So yeah, but what if I say, what if I say, well, I, I read that, but I, I, I don't feel that's true for me. I'm, I, I think I'm pretty good. Well, uh, Stella, what would you, what would you say? Um, I think you could have two approaches. Like one, you could ask them, like, well, ha do you lie? Do you cheat? Do you steal? And you could go through a list, and you, they would have to say yes to something. <laughs> um, or you can just, you know, point them to Christ, because I think once we come face to face with Him, we see our sin. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's clear. <laughs> and maybe the closest they'll get to that is seeing the love of God in you, yeah. mm -hmm. right? I had a student come to me one time, I was teaching at a university, and a person said, I, I just don't feel my need of God, I don't feel that bad, I don't feel like I need a savior. And, and I, I challenged the, this uh, young student, I said, I want you to pray a simple prayer, okay? You know what I asked her to pray? She may be watching today. I said, I want you to pray a simple prayer, Lord, show me my great need of you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Simple prayer. Right. And, and you could pray if you have already come to faith in Jesus, in Jesus' name. That means I stand under his authority, mm -hmm. surrendered to his will. But you could also, you know, maybe you don't know Jesus yet. Lord, show me my great need of you. She came back, and you know what she said? <laughs> don't ever tell people to pray that prayer. That's what she told me. Don't ever tell people to pray that prayer without telling them to ask God to hold them close when he shows them. Mm -hmm. Wow. I don't know all of what she saw. Right. Wow. But you know, maybe we, we can show them the love of God. We, mm -hmm. I don't know that we should try to point out all their sin, right? <laughs> but, uh, but God could show them, couldn't he? Yes. Their great need. Yes. But he's a God who loves them. So she said, say to pray. She said, if anybody ever asked you to do that again. Wow. I never forgot this. Wow. Yeah. Pray. Lord, show me my great need of you, but hold me close wow. when you show me. Wow. Ooh. David. You know, um, you, you kept pressing us, but what if? <laughs> and that's a very, those scenarios are very real. And it's an exciting encounter. And of course, it's easy to try to show them where they're not perfect. Mm. But the Bible says we keep pressing towards that mark. Mm. You know, so many songs and verses come to mind. If I be lifted up, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Right. And, and it's a wonderful time. My approach, it's a wonderful time to be standing with someone who says, but I am, I'm pretty okay. Mm. It's just uh, the love of Jesus that could move you from that point to the next. And, and that's not an antagonistic place. It's just, thank you, Jesus. I would never tell a person to pray that prayer unless they asked me, how, how could that happen? I think our primary responsibility, back to why there's five chapters about how to live in Romans, is to live that life and for the person to then say, you know what, there's something different about you. Mm -hmm. There's love in you that I don't feel in my own heart if I'm honest with myself, right? right. We're, not, we're, we're just saying, God, that's your, that's your area to bring conviction to people, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. But we all come to those places. I want to look at two other texts in... In Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the bad news is all of sin. Stella, what's the good news? In Romans 6, verse 23, we've got to make sure. Paul wants us to know the good news. What does it say? I'm reading from the New King James Version. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I'm so glad it didn't stop halfway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> because at some point, we will all come face, to the f face with the truth that we're sinners. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will. And, and here's an example. Look in Romans 7, 14 and 15. A person might say, I'm pretty good. And then something will catch them by surprise. Maybe they're surfing on the internet or they get into an inappropriate relationship at work and they go, well, there's something in my heart that isn't right, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They get that conviction which comes from the Holy Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul actually talks about that in Romans 7, and who'd like to read that for us? Hold it. Verses 14 and 15. I'm reading from the New King James Version. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Have you ever had that experience? Don't raise your hand. We're on global television. <laughs> uh, no, honestly. The thing that you really not only know you should do, but want to do, mm -hmm. 
What's something you want to do? Like be kind to people, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Show Always. the ways. <laughs> Sometimes some of the things I want to do, I don't do. Mm. Mm. And and not only that, but some of the things I don't, don't want to do, I do. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Mm. Raise your hand. No, do. <laughs> <laughs> he ends that chapter. He says, "Wretched person that I am." Who will free me? Yeah, who will deliver me mm. from this body of death? It is death because the wages of sin is what? Death. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Thanks be to God. Amen. Mm. Yes, sir. Thanks be to God Amen. through Amen. Jesus. Amen. That's the gospel message, right? Yes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when I come to the place that I realize, you know what? Either I prayed, Lord, show me my great need of you. And they told me to have you hold me close when you show me. Or uh, I just... It catches up with me. You know what? I look pretty good to people, but, but I know my heart. Mm. Mm. Um, I've got two options mm. at that point, really. Mm. What are my two options? Jesus. Uh, give I, up. I, I can give up, right? Mm. I can jump off a bridge. <laughs> or like a young lady who told me, well, God, I'm just, you know, I don't want to live for you, so Satan, you might as well just come in. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. She told me her testimony that the next five weeks was like hell mm. on earth. Wow. Yeah. Mm. That's a choice you can make. There are only two kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finally, her life so chaotic, she thought, and this was a student when I was teaching, mm -hmm. said, God. And I'm paraphrasing now because I don't remember exact words, but I do remember clearly what she said. God, you know, I'm, I'm really not settled on our relationship, but, but if you'll take me back. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll take me back. Right. I'm coming back. Right. Yeah. You know, it, it, she was saying, I'm, I'm not really fully in love with you yet or devoted, you know, but I see the two choices. Yes. When we come to that place, one choice is to give up and the other choice is to Excellent. cry out to Jesus, right, mm -hmm. Daisy? That goes back to the question that you asked earlier about: Should we tell? I mean, should we tell people the message? It's like they need to know, even though they have the instinct that tells them what is right or what is wrong. They need to know because there's two um, end results: you're either mm -hmm. saved or you're condemned. And many people live um, ignorant of the fact that there's destruction ahead. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bible says there's a way that seems right to the man, but the end is actually destruction. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't know that there's um, evil, that Satan exists, that his goal is to destroy people. Yes. So we need to let them know the message about Christ, that you need to be de delivered from that destruction. Otherwise, yeah. you know, because that's why we have to carry that message and tell people so they will Amen. be saved from that. Amen. And there's some really good news uh, for us in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13. Um, because sometimes we really do struggle. Who can deliver us? Um, what does it say in Romans 10, Wilbur, and verse 13? Okay. Reading from the New King James Version, it says, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Shouldn't it be a little more complicated than that? <laughs> nope. <laughs> but there are five other <laughs> chapters in Romans, right? Yep. Right. Mm -hmm. So... But why are those chapters there again? So that we can abundant have life. abundant life yeah. and show others, God's show God's others God's experience the, the life that God intended for us as His redeemed children. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't told me that simply all my life. Was it you? Mm -hmm. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall... Does that mean a dying thief could just cry out, Lord, yes. remember me when yes, you come indeed. in your kingdom? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let me give you a list of things you have to do. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask you a question. If he had, if they said, oh, wrong person, sorry, we're going to let you down. Mm -hmm. Would he have lived differently? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Daisy? God knows our heart. He knows our motives. And as humans, we can't really judge a person and say, oh, okay, they're saying this today, but tomorrow they're going to change their minds. Mm -hmm. God knows the future. He knows what our decision means. And so he knew that that thief on the cross was not just saying it just because of the situation he was in, but he had seen something in Christ, and that made him say, 
I want to be with you. You know, so remember me when you go to heaven. I think of in the Bible it speaks how God, he actually transforms our hearts. So when we come in contact with the love, it's not like something we're thinking, I need to do that, but it's just God, he changes our hearts. So we're completely different after that. Yes. Mm. You know, it really is amazing because that thief that we were referring to, there were two thieves, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The scripture says both of them were reviling and cursing him. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then something happened to one of them. Right. Yeah. Back to why there's five chapters in Romans about how to live. Yes, sir. Because that's our witness. Yes. 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 And, and, and he saw something in Jesus yes. that mm. wasn't like the other people. Mm. Now, that's, that's not like, I'm, I'm not Jesus, right? <laughs> you say, I know, right? <laughs> But we are a witness. Yes. yes. We are a witness. Jonathan. Yeah, just back to the verse, like, I, if I am lifted up, shall draw all men unto me here on the cross. This is happening. I mean, you have two thieves and one of them, they're both against, seemingly against God, but by seeing Christ, by seeing this exemplification of God's character that he's drawn to him. And, his and back to what Daisy said earlier, there's two ways. They've got two choices, right? Yeah. Uh, the, and, and they actually represent both of those choices. One just keeps cursing, mm -hmm. and one says, Lord, remember me. <laughs> no, yes. The two thieves saw Jesus at his weakest, mm. but his, his um, reaction to what was, being, was coming his way, um, that might have triggered for that, that thief, yes. you know, this, wow, this is different. Back to what Heather said yeah. about clear in his focus, right? Yeah. In his mission, even when he's dying, yes. he's clear. Stella. I was just thinking about how simple this verse is. Like you just need to cry out to God. And I just, I had a unique opportunity to just go to different countries and see different faiths. And you know, you see all these people trying so hard to p appease God or you know, to make God happy. And they don't realize, like, all they have to do is cry out to Jesus and he'll save them. So I think in a way, it's just freedom. They don't have to live in a certain way anymore. They can be set free. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. That's why the world needs to hear, right? Yes. Yes. Must the whole world hear? Yes. 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 Because God loves them and we need to tell them that amazing news. And here comes a text that we're going to read after Heather's comment. Yes, Heather. Many times I think... Um, people misunderstand because they hear about a God who sent his son to save them from this condemnation that he's going to put on them. But the fact is that we all have sinned and it's like we're self-condemned in a way. Right. But God loves us so much and that's where the love steps in, that you're not calling out to some being who's saving you from himself. Right. He's saving you from yourself. He's and, saving you yeah. from yourself for himself, right? Yes. Yes. right? That's the text I want us to read, and it's mm -hmm. in John 3, 16 and 17. Some people have never heard this, Adrian, mm. so I want you to read it like it really right. matters. John 3, 16 and 17, because as Heather said, we're already condemned. Yes. He's saving us from ourselves for himself. Mm. Let's see what it says in John 3. International six. Version. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to, the, but to save the world through him. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Testimony time. When did you come to the place that you realized, I need a Savior, and you called out to Jesus to save you? Anybody like to share? Can you think of that time in your life when you realized, I need a Savior, and you called out to Jesus to save you? Heather. Well, I think that question is interesting because when I listen to it and I hear it, I can't think of one specific instance. It's a gradual walk. And it's almost like you don't notice until suddenly you're in his arms, God's arms. Beautiful? And, yes. and then you come to the point where you understand when Paul says, I die daily. Mm. You have to die daily. This experience isn't like a one time and then it stops. And that's I, I, the beauty of it. That's, that is beautiful. You grew up in a Christian family. So you heard about Jesus. I loved her wording. She said, you, you just kind of, you're just kind of growing until you realize that you're in his arms, right? Yes. Is that beautiful? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, but not all of us had that journey, right? Mm. Some like 
Paul, Saul had a Damascus road. Mm. Um, someone described uh, Heather's testimony like a sunflower. Mm. It just kind of mm. turns toward the sun. That's beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? Mm. That's a powerful testimony. Anyone want to share another story? Wilbur. Okay, I've, just like Heather, I also grew up in the church, you know, and uh, I think I got to a point in my life where everything seemed like it was, you know, normal. Here's what you do. It was a formality, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was actually trying to share the word with somebody, and he asked me a question. And then I had to sit and think a little bit, and I started to realize, you know what? A lot of the stuff I've known, you know, from growing up, but I haven't really gotten to understand it for myself. Mm. Mm. So you had a lot of information. Mm. Right. Mm. <laughs> right. And so a lot of it wasn't really personal to me at that point. Like, so that's, that's when I, had, I realized, you know what, I need to make this personal. I need to understand this for myself so it could be more practical for me. And then I could also, you know, be a witness to someone else that way. We need a personal relationship. There, there are no second generation Mm. Christians, right? Mm -hmm. We may be blessed to grow up in a Christian home, mm -hmm. but we're first generation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Personal experience. Daisy. Yeah, I'm taking this to another level as well. I really love what we just read in Romans 10, 13, that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I one time was asleep and was, I had this, I don't know if it was a dream, but I felt this evil um, presence on me and it was like crushing me. Mm. It, this just happened recently, like a couple months ago. And then in, in that dream or in that situation, I started screaming, Jesus, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And even in the dream, while trying to say, it's like the words couldn't even come out because that pressure on me was so uh, strong. But after trying to mention that name so, um, a few times, whatever it was just kind of went away. Mm -hmm. So it's, this became more practical to me that even we're, it's, it, the Bible says that we don't fight flesh and blood. There's this mm -hmm. evil principalities and dark places that are actually fighting us. And so even when we're faced, whoever gets into that kind of situations, when you call on the name of Jesus, he would definitely uh, deliver you from the hands of the evil one. Amen. So it's right. not just talking about in the wonderful by and by, <laughs> but right. if you call upon him now, uh, yes. Yes. right? Yeah. You know, I just want to share with you that's happened to more people than, than we know. Yes. And they don't know who to talk to about it because people will think they're crazy. Mm -hmm. But the battle between good and evil is very real. Yes. And your testimony touched someone's heart today mm -hmm. that calling upon the name of Jesus can give us freedom. Mm -hmm. Everyone who calls on the name of the yes. Lord mm -hmm. will be saved. Anyone else want to share a testimony? Stella. Uh, I had the opportunity to grow up in the church, um, but I, for whatever reason, I wasn't really taught about salvation and grace and mm -hmm. God's love. and. And um, when I was 18, I was selling books door to door and uh, I was involved with the church and there were leaders there and they would over and over again preach the grace message and that God loves us and there's nothing we can do to work for it. Yes. And I spent all summer listening to it and it was really hard. I wouldn't accept it. But by the end, I was just so compelled and I accepted it fully and, and I was baptized for the second time because I was just so in love with God and what He had done for me. And Amen. so it was, a, it was an amazing experience, and I'm really glad that I was able to hear about it. And, and do you need to be reminded of that? Mm. Yes. yes. <laughs> Sometimes we forget, don't we? Yeah. Because mm. our culture says it's all about performance. Yes. 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 But the Bible says it's all about God's grace. Yes. So we need to hear again that simple verse, Daisy. Everyone who calls mm. on the name of the Lord will be saved. Yeah, yeah. But now we've got a mission. In our last section, you'd think I'd go somewhere in the New Testament, but I'm going to take us back 700 years before the time of Jesus to the prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah 55, we're going to talk about the mission. Uh, does everyone, must the whole world hear? Mm -hmm. Here's the mission, Isaiah 55. And Sean, if you could start off in this chapter by reading verses 6 and 7 for sure. us. I'm reading from the King James Version. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Mm -hmm. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. Mm -hmm. Wow. Why why is there, should there be a sense of urgency 
We, if the whole world, why, why is it urgent? Why can't we say, well, when I retire, mm -hmm. why is it urgent? Hold it. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or even for the rest of this day or mm -hmm. the future. Mm -hmm. We can't read the future even though we think we know what's going to happen. The weather says how it's going to be. We really don't know what's going to happen yeah. and we might not be here. And so the prophet says, seek the Lord while, while, he, is. Is while he may be found, right? Because you don't know how much time you have, right? Mm. Yep. Or how much time there's left on planet Earth. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And there in, in verse 7, it talks about your thoughts. Um, the unrighteous man is thoughts. You know, there's an urgency because every time we think something, it's going to affect our next thoughts. Mm. And then the thoughts after that. And so right now, if I have a decision to make and I say, oh, I'll put it off. Well, putting it off may affect putting it off again and again and again. So the urgency there is... is is the impact on our own thinking. Isn't there a text that says, today, if you hear my voice, not do not harden your heart. heart. Why? Is it possible you could come to the day where you wouldn't hear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. While there's time, yes, Sean? I was just going to say, it's like the parable of the soils. You know, sometimes we don't, well, we never really fully understand our condition. And when the gospel is being presented to you, you may be um, involved with otherworldly things and rejected, or you may have other people who come up and, you know, like they were saying earlier, they could take your life, or you may even take your life. So there is an urgency. So there's an urgency to make a decision. Call upon the name of the Lord. Mm. Let's see what happens for the, we've got this mission, right? Mm. Because it is urgent. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's see what the prophet tells us in verses 10 through 12 of Isaiah 55. And I'm going to ask David if you'd read that for us, sure. beginning with verse 10 of Isaiah 55 through verse 12. And I'm reading from the New International Version. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without weather, watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Mm. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace, and the mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. I love that last part. <laughs> this is our assignment, and what, what are we going to experience if we're faithful to that assignment? Joy. Mm. Sure. joy, yeah. joy. Right? I mean, even nature is going, yay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, clapping hands, yeah. right? All nature's rejoicing with us yes. mm. because, um, and we're rejoicing too. Why? Why, why are we rejoicing? Because we get to be part of the work of Christ, yeah. mm. and which is leading others to accept Jesus and to know Jesus, first of all, as, as, as the Savior. Yeah. yeah. We get to join Him in what He's doing. In the last few minutes, I want to give you a chance to share. And for those of you who are joining us, I, I just want to invite you to send us an email, sshope hopetv.org. Share your testimony. When you joined the Lord in His work, mission work, where you experienced amazing joy, we'd love to hear from you. But let's share from our group. A time when you maybe weren't in a foreign land, may have been at work yesterday, but where you joined the Lord in His work and you experienced joy as you saw Him work in you and through you. Anybody like to share? Daisy. Okay. Well, this is just what we did recently about the Global Youth Day. Um, we, this is said to be the sermon, go out and do acts of kindness. And so we collected some donations to take to an orphanage. And it's just the joy that they had just to see that people cared enough to bring them the things that they needed. Just seeing the, the happiness, the joy in your faces actually put joy in my heart that, wow. I'm glad to be a part of this force of people that are willing to be God's hands and feet to yes. do His work and meet the needs of people. So as you saw them experiencing joy, joy came back to you? Yes. Mm. Didn't Jesus say, give and it will be given back? Yes. Mm. Anybody else experiencing joy? Jeff? Yeah, I grew up in the church as well, and um, I'm kind of a product of someone with joy because there was this, there was this old lady in the church who took me under her wing. And, um, she, she always had joy. I don't remember her ever preaching a sermon to me, but she always had joy. And later on in life, far beyond my grade school years when I was in college, I was really struggling with being a Christian and being a Seventh-day Adventist. And um, I couldn't leave the church because of her. 
Mm. She she was always, you know, I could leave a lot of people, mm. but I couldn't consistent I couldn't be consistent and leave the church because of her joy. Her joy was something mm. different. So oh. so I've experienced the joy making a difference in someone's life. Mm. So back to the five chapters of how to live in Romans. <laughs> it does make a difference. It does make yep. a difference. Yes. Call upon the Lord, that's wonderful, but the way we live or the way that this lady lived. Yes. Yeah was for the salvation of your soul. Yes, for wow. sure. The joy that she experienced. Someone else, joy as you join the Lord in His work. Adrian. I think for me, like everyone was saying, like when, once you, people ask you questions, they want to know why are you so happy? Or why, why do you have so much love? And when you get that joy to say, it's because Jesus Christ loved me first. Yeah. So now I want to share His love. So I get joy seeing people just run to Jesus' feet and wanted to witness and feel that love that I feel. It brings me great joy. And you know, back, back to impacting us, when we see people run, it reminds us that we need to run, run too, to right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, as we join Him in what He's doing, incredible privilege. Gary. Oh, I had this one opportunity. Um, my fiance and I we were just out. We were going to buy a desk. And um, on the way to the store, we saw a gentleman. And he, um, he approached us. Then he, he was like, no. And he started walking away. And we followed after him and said, what, what's going on? And he was like, hey, I lost my job. I'm a retired vet. And this is the situation. And we, we, we it was a cold winter night. We gave him gloves, got him some choc or hot coffee or chocolate, hot chocolate. Then we were like, we need to do more. We went and got him some food. We prayed with him. He never knew what hit him, right? No, he was just like. Oh. You went to buy a desk and you ended up sharing the love of God. Yes. That's a missionary. Yes. Uh, we're out of time, but you've got a work to do. You know, the prophet asked, whom shall I send recording the word of the Lord? Who will go for us? Mm. The prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 6 verse 8 said, here am I. My Lord. Send me. Yes, man. Would you pray that prayer with me today? Here am I. Send me. Mm. Let me share the good news with the world. That everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Let me live by the Holy Spirit's power, a life that will be a blessing to those around me. Yes. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this series of studies on missionaries. Our heart response, who will go for us, would be, here am I, Lord. Send me. Yes. We know we're not that strong, but we thank you that your strength is made perfect even in our weakness. Yes. Fill us with your love, with your grace, with your mercy, with your joy, that blessings may flow to bless the lives of those around us. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, thanks for joining us for this series on Hope Sabbath School. It has been life-changing. Don't keep it to yourself. Take that good news. Share it with those around you.